How many times have learners of music said this and teachers heard this, whether it's an open mic, a gig, or a lesson? There's actually some meaning behind these words, but they need some translation, and here it is. I don't know that this actually applies here, but it makes sense. Did you know people will actually choose to relive a more painful experience if the peak of the pain was closer to the end? So, if on one hand, you have an extended period of a little discomfort, but a short burst of increased pain at the end, we perceive that as more painful than experiencing a bunch of pain with a little period of less pain at the end. There's something about our last impression that changes our perception, even when it comes to physical pain. This is known as the peak end rule. This type of thing is elaborated to the hilt in researcher Daniel Kahneman's excellent book, Thinking Fast and Slow. I think this may apply in our practice when, at the end of practicing a particular piece, we play it over and over. Finally, by the tenth or whatever try, we, in our fatigued, repetitive, just want to get it done state, play it acceptably well. That is, with a minimum of mistakes and avoiding some previous mistakes altogether. Of course, we had all of our previous errors and corrections fresh in our mind on the tenth try, and that isn't going to be the case in a lesson or performance. We'll have to pull it out of our memory, cold, on the spot, and somehow hope for that one in ten after many recent repetitions performance. But of course, we sound like 90% of the trials we played at home. Do we need a statistics lesson on this here? Oh, by the way, we will be way more anxious than we were at home. So that lucky one out of 10 try has an even lesser chance than 10% of happening. And it is this, I hope I get it right, like sometimes in practice type of preparation that contributes to the anxiety as well. So no, overall, we didn't play it better at home. Do we practice performing, that is to say playing a song in its entirety without pause, then looking back to see what could be better? We may think we do, but many times we make little micro-corrections just to be sure we could get that fingering, bowing, sticking pattern, whammy bar dive, whatever. You know what I mean. When we make a mistake and go back and sometimes just a fraction of a second, quickly get it right and move on. It really takes no appreciable time at all. It might add a few seconds to a five minute song. But guess what? You won't be able to do that in performance, which if you've been doing what I just described, you have not practiced like a real performance at all. Playing all the way through without the option of taking a mulligan feels as foreign as a lunar landscape in this situation. And lucky you, you get to experience this for the first time in front of an audience or teacher. Yup, we couldn't play it better at home. This refers to where we start. Right before we go into our lesson or playing live somewhere, we don't practice, we warm up. And this makes sense. When practicing performing, even when we do it well without micro do-overs, we do so after much previous practice. We're warmed up on, on the song like an idling race car. Now, add to that as many attempts as we wish until we get it right, and we've got a recipe for disaster on performance day. Why? because we won't be in the pole position at that time. Our, what I call, base level playing will come out when we're under pressure in real time with only one and one only attempt available to us. This represents how well we can access the memory for the movements and intentions we have stored in our long-term memory. It gets worse when we are no longer in our practice space and the context has changed and we get one shot to retrieve the memory in real time. When we play something over and over, we have access to the recent memory. As we all know, memory decays over time. The farther we get from the moment, the more it decays. The harder it is to remember accurately, right? Playing a piece over and over in the same practice session, even with some time in between, allows us to rely on a much stronger retrieval than in performances. We can do a decent job of getting stuff into our memory, but our education system in general does a pretty lousy job of teaching us how to get it back out when we need it. Much less get it out lightning fast with no second thought in an unfamiliar context. Think about it. We've all struggled on multiple choice tests at times. And there, we have time to consider the answer and even come back to it and correct. In performance, everything has to happen perfectly in every moment. One is doing it. No second chance, no thinking about it. There's a way to practice this. 
Look into something called retrieval practice and the many ways we should be practicing it so that performances sound exactly as we've learned. If you would like to find your base level retrieval, try this. At the beginning of practice, warm up as we would for a performance of just that piece, like a studio class or convocation or open mic type of thing. Then play the piece once and turn the camera on and play it through. That is how it will sound when we perform. So whatever that level is, that is what you can expect. And you'll know how much to practice you really need. But what if you look at the recording and you actually did pull it off? Hooray! You are to the final stage of performance preparation. Well, my parents don't feel any smarter, but here are some workable solutions. I also encourage teachers to try this for just a couple of lessons here or there. That is all we should need. There's no excuse nowadays for not recording parts of our practice. Back when I used to ride my Triceratops to and from school, we had to set up all kinds of equipment to do this. Now a phone works. Audio only is fine, but seeing things as well is more helpful when it comes time to practice performing. Play the thing once, then record yourself playing the second attempt. Even better, follow the base level procedure I just described and record that. Feel free to keep playing and practicing that music as much as you'd like, but when you go to your lesson and believe you can play it better at home, watch that recording with your teacher. The teacher should be able to give you advice on how to proceed based on the recording and the performance you just gave. But what if the recording actually is way better? What is a teacher to do? Well then, my friend, you are at that wonderful junction at the end of learning a piece. You just need to rep the performance of it here and there. This is retrieval practice, and we are learning how to pull the information up from long-term memory lickety-split without any previous cue. That is how it will be when we get on stage and each time we retrieve, we make future retrievals even stronger, even if we mess it up. I want to say that again. Each time we retrieve in practice, cold, we will, even if we mess it up, we will be better at the next retrieval later. It's called the testing effect. Look it up. The good news is you've got it right. The great news is, is that with more work, you'll be able to never get it wrong. That is not some hokey philosophical statement. This exists and you can achieve it. All humans can with the right amount and type of work, such as well-planned and executed retrieval practice. Remember when we were beginners and we just wanted to play through our pieces and practice, trying to remember not to make the same mistakes the next time? Remember how our teacher laboriously, over much time and repetition, taught us to stop, isolate, focus, slow down, and pay attention to the small sections? Well, guess what? It turns out the end of learning a song is exactly like we wanted at the beginning. So now we get to do what we wanted all along. How cool is that? Pro tip, if you want to supercharge your retrieval practice, play the sections of a song randomly throughout practice. This will make retrieval harder in practice and even stronger when we get on stage. For instance, play, if it's a folk song or a rock song or something, play the chorus at one point, and then a little bit later, play a verse, and then a little bit later, play the bridge or intro. If it's a classical piece, play the B section, then later on, play the D section, and then the A section, out of order. Calling them up randomly. A quick note, what will more than likely happen when we first start recording is that it'll force a sobering assessment of the situation. The dreaded failure. Failure is great. It shows us how not to do something. Aren't you glad you're not going to do that again? Get to know your practice. It won't bite. I'm Greg Goodhart, the learning coach, and you've got all the talent you need, so enjoy it by getting to work.